Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to see how to do hot reload in our Go projects. So what happens nowadays is that we are working with Docker a lot and after building a Docker container we may want to make a code change and see the changes in the container immediately rather than like building the container again. So using the hot reload functionality, we can achieve that. Now, many other uh, languages already have this functionality or frameworks. For example, in Java, we have Quarkus, which immediately does hot reload. Also, Spring provides that. Uh, I'm sure in other languages also, there would be some sort of functionality like that. So in this video, we'll explore how to do this in Go. So let's begin. So let's come to our VS code and uh, start building a very simple Go application where we are going to simply take a request parameter from a request and going to return the value present to the request parameter. So let's do that. So first create main.go file and we will write the code here for that. So func main package main func main. Now we need to we need a handler to serve the requests. So http dot handler func handle func and it will give the root path here so uh, it's always the pattern and then the handler function so let's say hello handler hello handler okay handler and then next we need to define the handler um, but before that it is to be the listen and serve and then we need to pass the address so let's say 8181 and there's nothing here and let's do error handling as well. So if uh, this and error not equal to nil, error not equal to nil. So uh, let's say log dot Better, right? Server not started. Okay. And let's define the handler now. So func uh, hello handler, hello handler, and we need the response writer. So HTTP dot response writer. And then the request. So r star http dot request, right? Okay. And uh, we'll let's make this a get request. Okay. So so if uh, r dot I think it's method, right? Method equals to get, right? So you take like uh, the request parameter from this so that would be r dot uh, url and then we'll get the query parameter right so query parameter which query parameter would take would say let's say name okay so name and so that becomes name equals to okay and this should be sorry this should be get uh, uh, get I think dot uh, dot query dot uh, okay so I'm missing this because it's a function and then would simply write it back so response writer dot write and would return name or other um, 
let's say high name right mt.sprinter so it says something like uh, high this and go to next line yeah, right uh, okay it is a byte so that's the reason so byte okay uh, so so yeah I feel like that's it uh, let's try to run it so so go run go run main dot go main dot go let's say curl http localhost 8181 and then uh, we need name equals to name equals to let's say ram perfect it's returning high ram so yeah so basically it looks like it's working <coughs> we'll press so we'll add just our print statement here to you know just verify that we received this uh, request so log.println and we'll say get request received right and let's try again uh, stop this restart this start this now uh, get request received you are getting a log right so it looks good now let's quickly create the docker files so first would be the go.mod file so it would say go init init example.com slash i don't know hot reload maybe hot reload reload okay oh sorry uh, it would be go mod init um, so go mod init go mod init okay, okay. Uh, run, we would run go mod tidy go mod tidy okay and now we need the docker compose file so it create a file uh, touch touch docker dash compose dot yaml and we we'll need a docker file so docker file docker file okay so let's now modify these two files so first docker compose so version is let's take 3.8 uh, services services service name so let's say go app okay. now you take the build uh, so build let's take the context it would be that would be our current context and the docker file would be our docker file let's take this as capital docker file so this looks good uh, we need what else do we need um, container name maybe container name so let's we'll say go app um, or uh, yeah let's keep it for go app okay and then uh, we need the ports right ports that would be 8181 8 and then 8181 8 okay uh, what else um, uh, let's keep a network just because it's it's a good practice so network name would be go app network networks okay or network rather um networks go app network go app network okay that should be it i don't think anything else is required so yeah i think nothing more is required in this file so let's go to docker file so docker file would take a base image so let's take from uh, go 1.19 1.19 and we take an alpine version so the dash alpine i think it is good yeah it's alpine okay uh we take it in an app directory so work their app app and let's copy the let's copy basically everything so copy 
go dot uh, dot, uh, dot slash to dot slash so I'm going to copy all like all four files and uh, okay so before that I need to show you which uh, library <coughs> I'm going to use to uh, do this hot reload so the name of the library is <coughs> compile daemon so you can simply do compile daemon and to go to the github so so here you can see how to install this so i have like already installed it in my local system and it needs to be installed in the uh, docker container as well so uh, let's do that so we're going to copy this and we are going to go here and do run and paste this so we need this library and then after getting it we we'll run the comma tidy one second so comma tidy right and that should be it now to run this uh, compiler correctly we need to set the entry point and we need to give the compile demo uh, uh, like the command line so it goes like this so compile demo sorry compile demo like i'm going to print the most basic version that and it would mostly work for uh, everything so dash dash build is the build command the build command that it would run when any file is changed so we would say uh, build it and put the build file in a separate folder called build so let's do that it's just a good practice nothing mandatory but let's do that and we would say go app okay uh, and and the command that is after the build is done what should you need to do that would be uh, to run this run this executable right so dot slash build slash uh, go app okay go app. and uh, which uh, which files does it need to watch to see the changes like when I make any changes in in these files, which files should it look for to to pick up the change basically? That we can define in build directory. So dash build dash div and in the container it's the app directory because the app directory is something that we created in this line. Okay. And yeah, that's it. So this should be our um, Docker file. And because when you make this change here locally, it should be reflected in the container, right? Otherwise, how will how will the file change here if there is no linkage between the local file and the uh, and the and the file present in the Docker, right? So we need to mount the volume to do that. So we'll come here and just do a volume section. So volumes and we need to do dot slash and that would be our app directory that should be it right so in this manner we are saying that current directory should be mounted to the app directory okay so now let's run this <coughs> so docker compose up uh, dash build so networks must be a mapping so I think it's needed like this. Uh, let's see. Okay, it started. So for what is going to download? It's first going to download the Go image 1.19, and then it's going to do rest of the stuff. I'm going to forward the video if uh, a long time is needed for do this. So so hang on. So it's going to download that uh, library and install it. So looks like it was not able to find it. 
So I need to see what's going on. So drop a file and uh, we need to do go install here, not go get. So so let's run this again. So maybe I need to put it in the front. Maybe let's do this. Let's see. Okay, and put the test here. So yeah, that should fix this. So it's going to download the library and uh, install it in the image. So let's see. Yeah, now it's working and you can see the build folder has been created where the executable has been placed. Now, <coughs> if we do curl, it's connecting to the Docker container, right? So now the change has been present. Now what we can do just to test it that hot reload is working or not, we can uh, make some changes here, maybe received uh, testing hot reload. So source code change, now save it and you can see as soon as I, I saved it, it's doing this restarting. Now if I do curl again, you can see testing hot reload has, been, has come. So you can see in this way we can easily do our development and as soon as our development is done, we can immediately test it. So this facilitates a lot in our testing development and testing process. And one more thing, uh, since I'm a Windows user, I'm, I have observed this. Um, this does not work from Windows directly. So if you, if I was developing in Windows, uh, like normal in Windows, then the this this restart doesn't happen using this library. But if you're using WSL, like I am doing right now, in WSL it works fine. So it works also in Linux. So yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Um, uh, if you like this video, just you know, uh, like this and comment on it. And thank you. See you on the next one.